ketone body formulations can be somewhat confusing, so I wanted to talk about just one form of ketone body. That's the uh, Beach monoester that was also developed by Kieran Clark. The formulation delivers a pure load of nothing but this compound, D-beta-hydroxybutyrate. Discovering and making this has proven to be a challenging task and it took several years to solve the problem. Let's break down the components of the name and see what D and beta and hydroxy and butyrate mean. We'll start with butyrate. Butyrate tells the chemist that there are four atoms of carbon and that it's also an acid. If we start with the carbon closest to the C, O, and OH in the acid group and label it with the first Greek letter, which is alpha, and then go to the second carbon, label it with the Greek letter beta, we can figure out that beta means the position of the hydroxy group on the beta carbon. It identifies the carbon which has the hydroxy or OH group. Now, we just need to fill up the carbons with hydrogen so that every carbon has four bonds, and we have the beta hydroxybutyrate. Okay, I brought out my toys. This ball and stick model shows two different chemicals that are both beta-hydroxybutyrate. What makes them different molecules is the beta carbon is joined to four unique entities. You can count them one, two, three, four. Whenever this occurs, the carbon is said to be handed. Chemists use the Greek word for handed, which is chiral. You see, we could switch the positions of any two of the entities bound to the chiral carbon and we get a different molecule. And With all the switching there are only two forms possible. The two forms are known as the D and the L forms. So if you gave the name D-beta-hydroxybutyrate to an organic chemist you'd think that he or she could probably get the structure right. And this is true except for the D part. See, the convention for the D and L started out as dextra and leva, which referred to the direction that a solution would rotate polarized light. So the D and the L terminology was replaced by R and S. And R and S is based on rules that allow chemists to actually draw the structure. So much for D beta hydroxybutyrate. Now, what is a ketone? The simple chemical definition is that it's a chemical that contains a ketone group. A ketone group consists of a carbon and oxygen bound to that carbon by a double bond and then two other carbons bound to that carbonyl group. There are three compounds that for historical reasons are known as ketone bodies. These include acetone which we can draw by adding three hydrogens to each of the carbons joined to the carbonyl carbon. We have acetoacetate which is the second ketone body. These are the three ketone bodies from our chemical definition of ketone. We see that only two of the bodies are ketones by a chemist's definition. The one that actually does the magic is D-beta-hydroxybutyrate and it's not even a ketone. So let's look at what the alternatives are that were rejected by Dr. Clark and Dr. Beach, starting with a mixture of D and L forms. A mixture of D and L forms is known by chemists as a racemic mixture. Pasteur was the first to recognize that there were compounds that came in right and left-handed versions. The first one discovered was racemic acid, which is a mixture of the right and left-handed forms of tartaric acid. When the sodium ammonium salt of racemic acid is allowed to crystallize, the result is D and L tartaric acid crystals. Pasteur was able to sort these under a microscope. The racemic mixture of both forms did not rotate polarized light. However, when the sorted crystals were dissolved, one form rotated polarized light to the right, the other rotated polarized light to the left. Hence, any chemical that is a mixture of its right and left-handed forms is now called a racemic mixture even if it's not made of tartaric acid. In nature, all of the beta-hydroxybutyrate made in the liver for energy is naturally in the D form. This is because enzymes work like gloves. They only match up with the one of the two-handed or chiral forms in the active site of the enzyme. The enzyme that converts the D-beta-hydroxybutyrate to acetoacetate, for instance, does not recognize the L form. When a chemist makes a batch of beta-hydroxybutyrate in a pot, it comes out a mixture. The cheapest way to make beta-hydroxybutyrate is in a chemist's pot. However, this gives you a racemic mixture. The L form of beta-hydroxybutyrate does not fit into the enzyme that makes it into acetoacetate.
So having a racemic mixture means that half of the beta-hydroxybutyrate doesn't work. Some people have tried to use acetoacetate. Acetoacetate doesn't have a chiral carbon. It's cheap. When you put it into the body, the enzyme that converts beta-hydroxybutyrate into acetoacetate can actually run backwards. The problem is you use up an NADH instead of making one. So why not give people acetoacetate? The NADH that D-beta-hydroxybutyrate makes when it's converted to acetoacetate is valuable. NADH is the molecule that is used by the electron transport chain to make ATP. ATP is the common currency for the energy of our bodies. By adding this NADH a lot of things change in the mitochondria to make it more efficient. Once D-beta-hydroxybutyrate has been converted to acetoacetate, it has lost the extra NADH. D-beta-hydroxybutyrate is like a fully charged battery and acetoacetate is like a dead battery. So let's talk about how we should deliver D-beta-hydroxybutyrate. The first choice is just to put it in the free acid form. This would be a bad idea because it tears up your GI tract. No one has even tried this. Another choice would be to add a counter ion such as sodium. The problem one might have with this is that a person might require 150 milliliters of D-beta-hydroxybutyrate taken in three doses over an event or a day. The equivalent amount of table salt with that much sodium is over 15 teaspoons of salt or a moderate salt shaker. To solve the salt problem, Dr. Veach and Dr. Clark proposed an ester. What about an ester? Dr. Veach and Dr. Clark tried to make an ester with many compounds. They finally settled on 1,3-butane diol. Let's break down that name. Butane implies a 4-carbon compound. The 1 and 3 are numbers for the carbon chain starting from either end. Diol means that there are two alcohol groups at positions 1 and 3. Let's see if this has a chiral carbon. The number 3 carbon has two distinct carbons and an alcohol and a hydrogen, so it's chiral or handed. As it turns out, the 1,3-butane diol can be joined to beta-hydroxybutyrate to form an ester. Let's take a look at how the body treats this ester when it gets ingested. The butane diol BHB monoester passes through the stomach without bothering it like free acid would then in the gut as well as in the blood there are many esterases that can break delta G down into beta hydroxybutyrate and 1,3-butane diol. Both of these molecules are absorbed in the small intestine and then into the liver. The liver has an enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase that converts 1,3-butane diol into D-beta hydroxybutyrate. This is like getting a pure load of nothing but beta hydroxybutyrate and so its transporters send it back into the bloodstream. From there, monocarboxylate transporters exist in the heart, skeletal muscles, brain, and the kidney that allow beta-hydroxybutyrate into the cell. There are also monocarboxylate transporters on the mitochondria that allow beta-hydroxybutyrate into the mitochondria. There, it adds an extra NADH. That it adds and NADH increases the driving force stored in the delta psi of the mitochondrial membrane. So, now you know why the scientists that actually discovered how this works came to invent D-beta-hydroxybutyrate monoester and why they rejected racemic mixtures, acetoacetate, and salts in their formulations.